if you've been struggling with your forehand or it's just not where you want it to be, you want to make it into a weapon like the pros, you're going to love this lesson because we're going to focus on some tennis technique, technique on your forehand that can help you develop a more efficient backswing to give you more spin and power on your forehand. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution and make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications and smash that like button if you enjoy this video. So let's get into the lesson right now to help you with your forehand technique. All right, so here we go. We're gonna get started with this forehand backswing issue. And let me tell you what the problem is. And it's a problem that I had on the tour. Now imagine this, I played 11 years on the tour and I had a tail on my forehand. What's a tail? Well, let me show you. So when you prepare on your forehand, and you bring the racket up like this. So the racket tip is up like this. The extra tail means that when the racket goes back, it starts to go behind the body. We call this breaking the plane like this. So essentially you're not able to take, keep the racket on this side of the body. So what ended up happening, what ended up happening when I was on the tour is that I would take my racket up like this and my wrist and my hand would lay back like this and I would break the plane. Now, a lot of women on the tour actually do this. Sloan Stevens and others still do this. They have a really big backswing where they break the plane. They break this half of the body. Now, if you have incredible timing, if you're playing on slow courts, you can handle this issue, okay? You can focus on, you can still time and hit the forehand the way that you want with that big backswing. But I can tell you from personal experience that when you play, when I played on fast courts, I was felt rushed. Everyone thought I should be great at Wimbledon. I struggled because I had the tail on the forehand. And it's because when I took the racket up like this, the wrist and the hand would lay back like this. And my theory is that I did that as a young player I didn't have as much strength as an older player, so I got into the habit of breaking the wrist like this. And that caused me to have poor timing when the ball would skid or come faster. And that's one reason why I love the buggy whip forehand, because if I'm late, I can just go like this with my, with my, uh, with my follow through, with my finish. This is also another reason why I struggled on my forehand return, because again, when I, when I prepared to return, the racket sometimes would lay back like this. I was breaking the plane. So, how the heck do we fix this? And by the way, I didn't even know this was such a big problem when I was playing on the tour. No one pointed it out to me. No wonder I was up and down. No wonder I struggled. No wonder I had good weeks on slower courts because I had time to rip my forehand. My forehand was good, but it wasn't Nadal-like. It wasn't Federer-like. It wasn't like Djokovic. Now, Here's what you have to focus on, and I've experimented with a lot of things. When you make your first move, there's a couple things you can try. The first thing is you can, you can make your move where you lift your elbow a la Yvonne Lendl like this, a la Nick Kyrgios and Jack Sock. So by making this move like this, it keeps the racket in this position longer so that when you drop the racket, it can flip, it can flip like this without coming back like this. Okay, remember, if you make a first move like this, there's a greater tendency for the racket to continue and go back behind the body like this. So, that's one way to solve it, is to lift that elbow. Now I've tried that, and I still, I get to here, and I have a tendency to go here. So the thing that's really helping me, and the thing that I believe can help you as well, is when you make your first move like this, you wanna to try to keep the racket to the side of the body. You wanna to try to keep the, the racket in front of your body a little bit like this, a little longer. Because as soon as you go back like this, there's gonna be that tendency to bring the racket behind the body. So when you make your move, look at where I take my racket, I keep my hands in front and I'm stalking the ball with my hands like this without going here too early, without, guess what? taking the racket back. One of the myths of tennis is take your racket back early. No, stalk the ball and keep the racket to the side like this. All right, now from here, what do you do? 
Well, this is what I believe can help you. It's helping me with it. As you take your racket, you're in this position, and what you need to focus on doing is you need to focus on dropping the racket like this. So, the, so I was always taught to take a loop, to make a C, take a loop, and that's what formed in my backswing, a bigger backswing, breaking the plane. So what you're going to focus on doing is you're going to get to here and you're going to drop the racket. So you're going to drop the racket to the side of the body like this. Now, you, I've seen other coaches teach this where you get to here and you drop the racket. Rick Macy talks about patting the dog. The one thing I'm not crazy about is when you drop the racket and you stop here and there's like a hitch. It just stops. I prefer to be here and then when you drop, you keep going. So the backswing is part of the follow through. The backswing is part of the follow through. So what I really have to work on is just keeping the racket to the side of the body and then dropping it and trying to keep the racket here before it flips back. Now, I'm gonna hit a couple balls here. Nothing too crazy, but the idea is that when you toss the ball up in the air, you're into this position right here. And then when you go to hit it, again, you're gonna drop the racket and it's not going to feel like you're taking a loop anymore. You're here, you drop, and you drop under the ball. That's it, you're here, you drop, and you go under the ball. It will, if you're used to taking a big backswing, it's going to feel super short. I know it feels super short for me, and even when I think about doing it, when I drop the racket, I feel like the tip of the racket is pointing this way when I do it, instead of being back here. Again, I'm in the habit of bringing the racket back here too early. So let me show this again. I'm gonna focus on being here, I drop, and I'm under the ball. I'm here, I drop, and I'm under the ball. Now the only way this is going to work for you is if you have the right grip. So if you have that trigger finger, if you have a semi-western grip, even if you have an eastern grip, you've got to make sure that you have this finger spread and you have to make sure that your wrist is loose. If you are tight, the, the hand is not going to flip. It's not, you're not going to be able to create that lag. So focus on making sure you have the right grip, your hand is loose, your wrist is loose, and you're gonna drop the racket like this. Drop the racket like this. Even if you have an Eastern grip, you can be here and drop the racket, and then you go. This is a novel concept for me, and I've seen other coaches have been teaching it the last couple of years. I wish I would have known this was on a tour when I was on the tour. Now here's the good news. I got to 100 in the world with the tail in my backswing. So you can play great tennis with a tail in your backswing. What we're talking about is being efficient. Now tell me, leave me a comment down below. Tell me yes or no. Are you efficient with your forehand? Do you have an efficient backswing on your forehand? I wanna know, type in yes or no down below. And is this something that you're gonna go out and practice? Just keep in mind, you have to focus on that great first move. You're gonna focus on that great first move and you're gonna focus on dropping the racket and you should feel like the racket is here instead of here or instead of here. That's the big difference. Now, the best way to learn this is to get it on video and study it, okay? That's what I want you to do. Now, before we go today, first of all, I wanna thank you for tuning into this video today. And I want to make sure that again, you give us that thumbs up and you turn on your notifications and you subscribe to the channel because we wanna help you get to the next level with your tennis. Click the link in the description below to learn the three amateur mistakes you may be making on your forehand. And we also probably have this link somewhere in the video. So go ahead and click below. I want you to avoid those three amateur mistakes you're making on your forehand and we'll see you at the next lesson.